Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back for another week. Um, good evening and welcome to Tin Your Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Um, yes, Monday night yet again, and uh, and we are here back in the room. And last week um, I was playing with, uh, with the Vamo board, uh, which we do continue um, this week. Um, Mark is doing something new and, uh, and, and something that some of the beginners out there uh, those of you that are new to modding will like. Um, I have to be very quick tonight. Um, we've got lots to get through. Um, I'm actually away on holiday next week. Um, what a time to pick to go away. Um, but it was a, uh, a nice cheapy one. Um, and we're in the UK, so we may be playing snowmen on the beach. My daughter does not understand that completely as yet, but uh, she will when she gets there. Um, so yes. You may have, if you tuned in earlier, I, I have new toys tonight. Um, I've got some new stuff because we're trying to, hopefully on, on, on this bit, I want to start bringing in uh, a few guests and things like that in, in the modding world. Um, so I, I've been out and, and been purchasing and um, look at this. Dibley has a new, a new rack mount thing going on in the studio. Um, yes, uh, some audio some audio processing stuff um, yeah still haven't got a bleeding clue how it works and the manual for that thing is incredible I, I, I don't know how to do it um, I've tried everything um, plugging stuff in and uh, hopefully you're getting sound if you're getting sound it's all good um, I've got lots of playing to do um, tell you what I might do uh, let's get on with our first little vid and uh, I'll catch you back very shortly after this Right, so we're back for a, another week, and we're picking up where we left off uh, last week, which was with the uh, with a little Vamo board. Now, I, I've been uh, sort of answering a few questions on on this um, via the forums and bits and pieces since last week, um, and uh, had a few suggestions as to what people wanted to see. Now, I was hoping that I was going to uh, potentially um, make uh, a uh, a box for this to go in. And I did actually go out and purchase uh, one of these puppies, um, a little alley box. Um, we were going to do something with that. Um, but the general consensus was that realistically, um, people wanted to see something that was easy to get hold of, um, didn't cost the earth, and uh, and was going to be easy to put together. Um, and a lot of people, even though I didn't want to do this, have, have requested that I put it in a tin. Um, so we have a tin. Um, I've already been uh, milling away and I'm, I'm just sort of having a, a fit out as it were uh, where we sort of come in now um, and uh, it's looking quite tight to be honest with you um, so uh, I don't even know whether, whether this is going to work um, I found my, my battery compartment uh, already which is a twin 18650 holder and uh, I've done my special things to it to make it actually sit in this uh, in this tin rather nicely um, and snugly. Now the only problem I've got, or I don't think is going to be a problem, it may well be a problem, I don't know. But when I've got my my and obviously we're going to make this um, we're going to make this twin 18650 power. Um, we won't be stacking them. We're going to be using them so it can be used with either one 18650 or two. Um, and uh, and we're looking at. Potentially, now you can see how tight this is going to be. Um, getting the board somewhere, sort of down in there like that, doesn't leave any room whatsoever for error. Um, I'm looking at putting a, a little top mounted switch up in the top there, and then obviously my Atty is going to be on this side here. Um, I could get a switch in here, um, but I, th I think it's it's going to be tight, it's going to be very 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 tight to get a switch in there as well and be able to work and, uh, and this and the other so I'm sort of hoping that that will sit down in there and if I try and get down a little bit further you'll you'll see exactly just how tight I'm talking about let's just spin that round it's extremely tight it's almost flush with the batteries 
so that means when I'm done with fixing, I've got to get me uh, me glue, uh, me battery holder sort of glued in properly. Um, need to work out where I'm going to be running these these wires. Now, because I'm I'm running the two uh, 18650s, I'm going to take a neg feed and a neg feed and run those uh, onto the neg on our board and a pos and a pos and run those in on on the pos feed. Um, so that will give you the scenario if you've got separate neg negs and poses running both wired up to the board um, effectively what you'll be able to do is like I say use either one battery or the other battery what I'm gonna very very quickly do and let's take this out now um, with this holder because these are flat top batteries and this is quite a, uh, a, a flat holder in there what I tend to do on these is just grip them in the uh, in the reverse of, of the um, the handle, as it were, of the pliers, and I'm just going to drop a little bead of glue glue. I'm not going to feed glue in it. I'm just going to dip a little bit of solder in the top. We've shown you how to do this before. It's just a case of feeding some in, watching it through to the other end. And what you want to do is is have a little blob come through like I've got there. Also aids um, obviously soldering to this. I don't know if you ever see this. But that will give me a little a little nipple inside. Turn over and do the same on the other side. Just dropping a little bead of glue in. Glue. He keeps saying glue. He's damn solder boy. It's been a long day today so far and it's only blooming two o'clock. Snowing. And it's not very nice. So my next step is going to be literally I'm going to, I'm going to get some wires on these uh, battery holders right now. So I'm just reaming off a bit of wire. Bear with me two secs. I don't know how much I'm going to need so I'm going to obviously go over the top with both of these. And effectively, I'm just going to have a possum and negs just tinned up and coming away from this battery pack. So just tinning those up now. Another one. And what I like to do with these is, is just angle them away. So I know that the way this is going to go in the tin, these will be angled down towards the uh, base. Same on this one, just angling it down. And the reason for that, as you can see, that's going to run relatively flat. I'll flip it over. I'll do the same with the uh, with the other side of the battery holder. I'll get the glue gun hot. I'll pop back and uh, have a chat after this. So I've decided for this week uh, I'm going to carry on the theme of basics as we've been doing some basics on tools and techniques and I thought I'd go back to the what's possibly the most the simplest mod to make the AA box mod. So. This is where I'm going to start. It'll take a single 14500 battery. This one's an IMR one, so my preferred one. And most of what you're going to do is, whereas this would be for two AA batteries, it'll be for the single battery on this side. And this side, the switch and the atomizer connector will go in. Fairly simple. So the first job is to remove the connectors from the bottom as you're not going to need that at all but it might come in handy for replacements for anything else so I'll keep it on one side and then this one at the top needs to come out again it'll just lift up if I could find a, something to fit underneath it So just pry it up out of its slot, like so, 
and pull the wire through. At the same time I'm going to pull the positive through like so. Now this has an on-off switch built into it and it switched through this this model anyway is switched through the positive so I'll be putting the push switch onto the negative side just so that both sides are separated. It's no real reason, it's just my preferred choice. So I need to carefully just bend this tab up and then slot the negative down onto this side. Anyway, I don't need that in yet, but it'll go in there. So, what I'm intending to do is run it this way around. So the on-off switch is going to be at the bottom. Your fire button will be somewhere here. And the atomizer connector is going to come out of the top. Most of it is because there's a lot more room on this plate than there is down here. So it just makes it easier to take it out of there for me. So, first job is to drill a couple of pilot holes. So I'm somewhere fairly central on here. remember to keep your fingers away from behind what you're drilling just in case and again on this side remembering which way around you're doing it we need the hole for the switch again it's probably easier doing it this way around if you look inside here there are markings for the positive and negative so what I'm going to do is use that as a guide and where the positive is, the cross for that, I'm just going to use that as the centre for the hole because I know that's midway so it should be in nice position As simple as that So now, finished with the pilot holes, and I'm going to use the step drill bit. I could probably get away without using a pilot hole at all with one of these, but I just think it's easier just to start off with that way. It's good, always good technique. So I've pre-marked how deep I want to go for the atomizer connector. So I'll just pop on the hole. Should be the hole done for that. So next job, quick test with the connector. As you can see, it fits in initially. I think it's a bit tight, so it still needs a little bit of file out. Possibly remove a bit of plastic on the inside that gets in the way. Now, the switch, on these standard switches, they're about a half inch. Around about 13 millimeters is what they recommend. So that happens to be the entirety of this bit. So carefully position your fingers out the way. Pop this against the pilot hole. Okay.
And there we have a hole for that. And again, just a quick check. And that will fit in there nicely. It's quite close to the atomizer. But there's just enough room there for it to fit the atomizer through without it impacting under this. And I don't want lots of wire in here anyway. So. Now what I've done ever so quickly before I come away is before you get your um, battery holder in situ, You've got to uh, drill out for your, your atty and things like that. So I've just run a, uh, a, a quick um, a couple of holes in there. The reason I'm speeding this up is because obviously I'm, I'm going away. Oh, look at that. Got a bit of lens glare back off the tin. Um, I'm on holiday um, next week, so I won't be here. Um, and uh, I want to get this nailed in, in one hit. So it's obviously a, a quick way of showing you guys how to do this. Um, and... Uh, I will most definitely be revisiting. I'm just bending back the the prongs on my switch here. Just need to be bent back, and all I'm doing is bending them back, and almost bending them back on themselves, like that. So back on themselves like that. And the reason for that is is this is going to be ever so tight anyway with the with this in. So I'm just feeding my switch in. From the reverse side. Now you've got to get your switch in before you get your battery holder in um, when you're working like this. So I'm just getting my switch in there and I'm just going to screw on the nook onto the side. Yeah, I've decided I'm definitely going to have another go at one of these um, Vamo boards. Um, you can actually buy the, the Vamo boards now without having to uh, dissect a, uh, a Vamo. Um, and I believe Stealth Vape sells those. Just burn on a second. What I tend to do when I've got that in is just grip it with a, uh, a pair of um, snips on one side and uh, I just ever so slightly tighten that on this side with a sort of set of box nosy type pliers. So it's nice and tight. And all I've done there is made sure that the bottom of the uh, switch is uh, sort of flush. Give a second while I go away. So that's now flush with the bottom of the box, bottom of the tin. Um, there's our switch installed. Next stage is going to be to, sorry, he's all over the shot with his camera. Um, next stage is, is going to be to get my uh, battery holder actually glued in place. <coughs> As you can see, that's going to go in after the switch there and to a certain extent look how close you can probably see how, how tight that is up against the switch if I go down very very tight up against that switch that's why we want to bend those pins back but we've got our feeds coming off there for our uh, you know two batteries pos and legs off, off our two batteries I'm just going to go ahead now and, and with the um, with the hot glue gun uh, which should be now warm. You've got to work relatively quickly with this. Um, just a good sort of bead on the back. Nice bead on the back. And then this end here, just going up against the tin. Sort of right around the corner on there. And then you want to make sure you just slot that in up against your tin. That end in first. Ease it down and give that a good push down. Good push down in the mop. And you can let that set off. Now while that's drying, drying, cooling, whatever hot glue does, cools doesn't it? You can touch down any bits that have sort of come up. Um, I'm just going to have a rough eye up of, of where we want this sort of, uh, where we're going to lay this down. So if this is going to be pretty much down inside there, I've got to get that up relatively tight. 
what I might do at this stage is work out that I'm going to run my neg under there. I'll just run that to there for now. My pos is going to be trimmed off. I can cut that off and trim that back inside there. So what I've done is just run my, my neg lead from this side of the battery. I'm going to run that under the tin where I'm going to glue. Uh, just to keep it a bit neater. This one here I can keep out of the way. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is do the same with my pos coming back the other way. So keep my neg out of the way. So I've got my pos running under there as well. So I've got your two poses up here now and my two negs back down here. So I'm just going to run those before gluing. Um, and it will just neaten things up because the wires when that's in place will then be sitting under the under the board as such. This is going to be a bit fiddly so I'm going to go away and, and glue this in place and uh, and I'll pop back. Uh, but it is simply a case of, of hot gluing and, and doing but it's, it's probably going to take a good 10-15 minutes and we're going to be relatively short on time tonight. So um, go away and glue and I'll be back in two. And there we go, that is our first little section over. Now I must say, um, I was quite intrigued um, looking at Daz's uh, Bobo um, and I was inspired. Um, so this weekend I went away and I made this. Um, it's sort of a, a spin on Daddy, you know, da Daddy's, Daz's uh, Bobo. Um, I call this one the Mofo. Um, Nice little VV unit, um, really heavy. That's solid. Um, I'm going to go into our first little web break now and I will catch you back after this. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flights sponsors 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. And there seems to be a lot of interest in the in the mofo in chat, and uh, I will I will show you how to make one of these. It's it's basically a a VV mod in a a really heavy aluminium case. Um, I dropped this on my toe earlier, and it, it I nearly said the name of the mod quite a few times. Um, I have to apologise if you are watching this live tonight. I do it, well. I appear to be experiencing a little bit of broadband problem. Um, don't know why. Um, don't know what the wife is downloading. Uh, I might go and see when I play in this next little vid. Uh, back to these. I'll see you in a bit. While I was away tidying up, uh, I've had a rethink about exactly what I was going to do. Um, because of the way I've positioned the switch, I'm going to be switching the positive side as it'll make it easier. There's not going to be a lot of room here. I'll take the negative directly onto the atomizer connector. And another thing is I'm no longer going to use this big LED. Instead I'm going to use a small one. As what I used to do 
with these was position the LED behind this little slot at the top. This one's a bit of a mess, but position the LED up here behind the slot so that it shines through a layer of epoxy. Once it's switched on, so you can see it through there. But as this is all so close up against the top, instead what I thought I'd do is I'll use the original hole the original hole here where the wires came out and a small LED and actually have that just popping out of the base and it fits quite nicely I'll just glue into place just to make life a little bit easier so back to where we were I need to uh, measure up these wires I'm going to move the positive to run to about there. And the negative. I'm going to run through this hole. And I'm going to push the wire down into this gap which would normally hold the battery connectors in place and we'll just get wedged down into there to hold it out, out of the way so I'll come out of here and have a little bit of play on the wire so I can work on it and what I'll do is I'll just solder this directly onto the atomizer connector before I pop it through so this piece of wire will come from here through to the positive on the atomizer. So I'm just shorten this a little bit. That should be about right there. So now all I need to do is just strip off these wires and get them ready. One thing I should have mentioned, uh, I'm going to use this black wire as well that I've cut off. That's going to go from the negative all the way down to the bottom for the LED and on the other side the resistor is going to come off the top side of this switch down to the LED and that will complete the circuit on this and the easiest way to tell which prong is which on this is the longer one is the positive the short one is the negative always remember that otherwise the thing won't work so, I've stripped off all the wires. Next job. I just want to join the two negatives together before I pop it in place. and tin up the wires it can be a little bit fiddly on this and your wires can get rather hot, especially when you're working with small ones. And I'll leave the other one to the last. Right. So now, to hold this in place. So just quickly pop the cardamizer in there and screw this on.
setting up the connector. So the way I've got this done, I'm going to do the positive first, because it's free. Tin up the tip. I'll pop it down in the hole. Positive done, and the negative. It's just going to be a matter of dropping it down inside. Just going to be a matter, he says, it can be a little bit fiddly. Just drop it down in the symbol. I'll just give that a bit of time to cool. Right, so as you can see, I've uh, I've got my my board glued down inside there. It's up as tight as I can get it to the uh, to the tin. Um, my wires are are running under the board. Um, we want to try and keep it as, as neat as we can, and uh, luckily it works out that that battery will sit in there just nicely and top on in there like that now obviously it's not wired up yet um, obviously I was going to look at mounting the display so we could see it from from outside but this is just a case of you can use your existing buttons on the board um, you can use the, the fire button as, as your on and off button to kill the board if need be and we're obviously running on twin 18650s um, so nice uh, and again these these are linked up so the Posies are together and the negs together. They're not running through in a in a stacked scenario. Next thing I'm going to do is just drop a couple of wires down in on for my uh, external switch. Now it's going to be quite difficult to see this, but I'm going to take it off these inside two pins here, um, literally just so I can run it around the outside of that board. Now I'm just going to see if I can. I'm going to drop one on first. And the one I'm going to drop on first is the uh, the top one. Um, again, this is probably going to be really, really difficult to see. And I don't know if I can hold this up at an angle while I'm down inside there doing it. Let me just see if I can prop it with something. Um, yeah, look at that. He's got magic blue tack. Let me see if I can get a lump of blue tack under there. And then do that like that. And then you might be able to see. That makes it damn near impossible for me to do it, but at least you'll be able to see it. So I'm just tinning up my tip, and he's going to have to do this all crack handed now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and get this one in first. Um, just dabbing down in on there. It says the first one on. Now what I'm going to do is run the, the second one over the top of the first one. If you remember what we were saying last week, we're just tapping across the two two pins on one side, which now means I can run those neatly down the uh, down the inside of that display, and uh, all of our wires will get tucked up out of the way under there. He says. So where do we go from here? Um, obviously, our next stage is is going to be to look at getting some power to the board. Um, now I've got already. Uh, an atty out here. I've got to get another atty out um, for the for the negatives and obviously neg feed for the batteries. Down the bottom of the tin here, what I'm just going to do is is roughly work a, uh, a couple of bits of wire to the sort of length I think I want them. Um, roughly about the same length. So we're snipping those right back down there short. And what I'm going to do is just excuse me. It's difficult this. Let me just see if I can zoom back out, because it's damn hard working down here, I can tell you. Let me just take a, uh, a little bit off the top of one of these wires, 
and doing it upside down isn't really helping much I can tell you same again there everything's going flying I'm just going to tin up these two pos wires you could twist them together there's no need really what I'm going to do is just take the first one down and on top of that connection down in there where our feel like our battery would go I'm not sure if you can see this probably can't so what I'm trying to do is I've got me my two posies running together I'm just going to tap them down in on the board if I move it that way at least I can work on it there's one down on I'm just going to run the other one same position get that down on there as well so I've got me two posies and effectively then what I can do is, is obviously just tidy these up a bit down in there to be honest they're not, not bad exactly where they are to be honest with you we have our, our pos connection and we can test our pos connection to make sure we've, we've actually got that to the board simple means of uh, putting the fluke on getting it on your beep test going off your positive pin down here to your pos pin there again off your other battery terminal onto the board so we're just testing that our wiring's in place next thing to do is going to be to work out our uh, our neg wires and let me just take you back ever so slightly so our neg wires um, that, that we've run, let's get our switch ones out of the way for the minute um, our neg, two neg wires are here and again they need to be coming down or well, this one needs to be coming round and coming onto our, our top neg pin here so we're going to snip that back round about there and this one's coming straight round off, off the board so uh, I can pretty much leave a little bit to play with there and of course we do have a third neg lead that we need to take into consideration which is going to be our atomizer feed which is also going to be coming off of this board so I'm just going to leave a, enough slack there just to take that up to the atty what I need to do, I'm going to go away, I'm going to trim these back um, I'm going to twist them all together and get them joined in one hit uh, and then we'll get them soldered up and we'll look at uh, running our switch wires I'll be back in two right you can see that what I've done is is sort of steamed ahead um, purely because uh, timing um, I've soldered on the me next lead so literally all I've done is taken a, a feed which is coming up to me at um, and uh, soldered the two uh, battery connections uh, onto there and um, so I've got yeah, two, two neg feeds I've also uh, trimmed back my switch feeds ever so slightly um, so my two switch feeds that go here what I'm going to do now is just feed those round and feed uh, one to, to the switch and one to the other side now the way that I'm, I'm going to do that is uh, very difficultly because um, it's hard to do this and, uh, and film it at the same time I need to be the other way around um, somewhere like there because what I'm just going to quickly do is, is grab the first one here and I'm just looking at where that's going to go on, on one side of the switch and I'm just going to bend that back ever so slightly run it down in on top of the switch and just solder that one side on first obviously being very very careful not to uh, not to burn any of the wires that are down in there 
and then my other one I'm actually going to just bend and, and go over the top just down there now you probably didn't see a damn thing of that to be honest with you but my two switches are in place and now I can just tidy up my, uh, my wires running through here a little bit and I'm not too worried about these because I am actually going to be having the uh, obviously the, the battery or, or the ATI connection is going to be coming in here um, what I should be able to do very quickly is pop a battery in test that side and if I take the battery out of this side and pop it in to the other side should get exactly the same so I've got a effectively I can use one battery or two so I can double up my ma <laughs> excuse me he's got a he's covered in sawdust today really sneezing um, so yes we know it's working our next connection is going to be these two wires here um, that literally come out sorry everyone there we go We've got our two leftover wires here, which all I'm just going to do now is, is measure up roughly where they're going to go through where the ATI connection is. Snip those back. I'm going to get those soldered on. I'll pop back into. We've all seen me soldering an ATI connection. You don't want to see it again. Bear in one sec. And there we go. We're moving rapidly on with the uh, the Vamo. What, what, what turned out to be the uh, the Vamo tin. Um, I do want to, uh, to to do something a bit better with that in wood um, at some point, and I will be actually purchasing a a Vamo board for the purpose of that. Um, next week I'm actually away, so uh, this week I'm going to try and pre-record something for you guys, and uh, I am going to be modding a tree trunk. Um, so next week, while I'm away having a few beers on holiday, um, you will see me with a chainsaw and a tree trunk and a mod that will be hopefully coming from that. Uh, with all that said, um, here we go into our second set of ad breaks. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back. Those ads go far too quickly because I barely had a chance to get my headphones off. So, yes, uh, next week um, I'm away. Um, I will be trying to pre record something uh, this week, uh, probably tomorrow or next day or day after. I don't know. Um, maybe Good Friday. I'm going away for a short break, um, Monday to Friday. Um, and uh, I am most definitely I've, I've decided uh, there was when I moved in this house um, it was a house that had some family history so we say um, my wife's family had lived in this house not this this is the shed but they'd lived in the house uh, since it was built in 1930 something or other um, we took it on and it's been a hell of a lot of work um, unfortunately planted in the garden um, was a cherry tree that was planted in memory of my uh, my wife's uh, grandfather. Now I saved when I had to cut it down um, 
because it was growing so close to the house I had to cut it down I saved a portion of trunk um, and uh, I'm gonna make or, or get some things made uh, for the family out of some sections of the trunk however I am going to uh, attempt um, and I say attempt uh, because <laughs> that's all we can do here we attempt things it may go totally wrong um, but I'm, I'm getting the chainsaw out and I'm gonna take a chunk off it and try and make something from it that vapes um, and that will be my thing um, I don't know how it's gonna work out the last time I actually used the chainsaw um, was to fell said tree and I ended up um, cutting the branch I was sitting on at the time and uh, it was rather painful and I went through the cable of the chainsaw that is now taped together um, and I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out but I'm rather nervous um, my wife has, has, has said she's going out when I pull the chainsaw um, I'm going to film it and uh, it will be here next week uh, in my absence either in A&E or uh, in the Isle of Wight where I'm going for the for the week um, with all that said let's crack on with our next little section <clears throat> pop this out that is incredibly hot I'm just going to leave it attached to that because I need to glue it in place and it needs to be straight. Pull the positive back through. It'll just be a matter of pushing this back into place. And it looks like I've messed up here somehow. I don't appear to have enough room. There's definitely not enough room in there. So it'll be time to go back to plan B. Desolder that from the box. And what I'm going to have to do is cut this down because I've made a mess. So I'm just going to let that cool off. I'll be back in a sec when you get cut. Well, this just goes to prove that no matter how much practice you have, things will go wrong. And basically, it's a failure to measure this out properly. I should have dropped this down a bit further. But I like the position with the battery there, switch at the top. So, to get around this, I have clamped this old cartomizer in here very tightly and screwed the connector back on with the centre pin popped out so it's out of the way. And I'm just going to cut off a section of this collar. The easiest way for me to do that is with a Dremel. straight through. So now it's going to be a matter of popping the atomizer connector back in. So I need my silicon washer, a grommet. I should just be able to pop it in through the base. Like 
isso? through there. and we're there. So this negative wants to run all the way down the side out of the way. Right, well I actually took the liberty um, because we all know how to solder an atomizer connection. It was just a, a case of those final two connections. So effectively all we've done, we've taken our, our POS um, feed from the POS, uh, uh, both sort of compartments here, same with the NEG. Um, we've wired up our, our NEG um, out to, to our ATI and our POS out to our ATI. And we've just taken a, a bridge across a switch there and gone to an external switch up here. Uh, and I've just put a bead of epoxy round inside there to hold that in place. Effectively, that, that is this one done. I needed to get it done rather quickly um, because, as I say, I am not around next week and I didn't want to be uh, sort of start starting something in wood and, uh, and having a massive break and, and then starting again. I will be looking at something in wood when I return. Um, I will be doing one of these in, in a bit more of an advanced case. But essentially, it doesn't matter what you put it in it's a holder. Um, you know, these are battery holders and this is the electronic age of modding. So it's just a case of what you put it in. Um, let me fire a couple of batteries in there. I'm going to run it in two batteries. Now, I've, uh, this is probably going to last an absolute age on two of these batteries. Um, turn it on and uh, I'm doing this upside down, but let me take it up to sort of about seven and a half watts on there. Um, let me just clag on a uh, a tank filled with some DY4. Nice bit of DY4 in there. So there's a, a Vamo um, minty tin in all of its glory. Let me just give that a junt and see how we go. Nice. 
better stop there really. <coughs> um, but yeah, it's good stuff that DY4. Or DV4 or whatever it's called. So yeah, I mean that that is gonna be uh, lasting a damn long time, I think, with those two those two batteries in. Nice and uh, pocketable and to be honest if you were to, to damage this you wouldn't be too hard to start all over again. Um, as I say, it is it is the you know it's it's a holder, it's a mod holder effectively. And um, you know, your displays inside there. If you vape like me and you adjust the wattage to roughly where you want it to be and close it up and, and away you go, happy days. If you are worried about that going off in your pocket with a top switch, you shouldn't do. But you've got your uh, your main and off in there. Um, or your fire, you should be able to turn it off from your fire. Boom. And there he goes. With all that said, it is back to me in the studio. Turn that back on. Happy days. That's a little tin mod. Uh, we like tin mods. You may well have guessed. I'll see you back after this. And there we go. So that was the uh, the. I have to excuse. My chair is so squeaky today. I don't know why. It is extremely cold here tonight. Um, I'm lucky enough to have central heating in the shed um, that I installed myself. And uh, and it's rather warm. Um, hence t-shirts and stuff. Um, it is extremely cold out there, um, and the weather this week has been horrendous. I uh, don't know where the hell that's come from, but hopefully, for next week, when I'm away on holiday, I'm hoping this time, this time last year, we had glorious sunshine. I'm pretty sure we did because at Easter, I was in a paddling pool in the garden with my daughter. Um, this year, we'll be making snowmen. Our bunkers is that um, still on the mofo. good um, yeah it's rather warm in here the shed is at a nice 21 degrees um, and it, it, it pretty much stays there for the entire duration of, of the filming um, which is good uh, next week as I say I'm away but I will be getting out the chainsaw I will be chopping up a, um, a nice bit of uh, tree trunk and I will be attempting to make a, a pipe out of the the spoils of the vamo um, Mark will be finishing his box mod, and uh, and and then next week I understand that Mark will be uh, will be looking at uh, a Vamo mod as well. So it's all coming. Um, with all that said, catch up with all the shows this week. Obviously, uh, all the way through. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm sorry, I am running really, really late of time. Um, one little thing. A bit more amp porn before we go. Um, it's been emotional once again um, it's been good I do apologize if you've experienced a few little glitches tonight while you've been watching live I'm sure they will be ironed out for the uh, for the replay um, it is time for me to go uh, once again thank you very very much to the team and to mark especially who eases my my little thing here no end um, really good to have mark on board and uh, it's, it's great to have a different sort of perspective on modding um, other than me because I don't know everything um, never claim to never will do <laughs> all right with all that said good night see you next week Tip with Gary Dibley.